Now, let's talk about when you did get kicked out. You said day one, you just went right back to your old life. Why did you like your old meaning like bad habits, the bad habits of drugs and all that stuff? Yeah. Why did you go that route? And um, and how did you refine a sense of purpose? I didn't see really anything wrong with it. That was the thing. A lot of times I didn't really know better. I just kind of was like, OK, well, I'm still going to work and still working out. I still have a kind of a beautiful life if you looked at it from the outside in. And I wasn't re- reckless with it. Well, I was, but at, at the beginning, I was like, oh, it was all, it was, I, it was me lying to myself. It was all kind of this, that, nothing was too crazy. It was all prescription, right? At the beginning, right? it was all prescription. So whatever, you know? So there was like all these lies that I was telling myself that, but it was Adderall, Xanax, weed, alcohol, everything's legal, everything's, you know, it was like, okay, whatever. But it was thrown off my cheek. I have no, I was centered at all. And that's all so self-serving. You get really wrapped up in your own world because you're not selfless at all. You're just focusing on what, how you want to feel, what you want to do. And I was still getting things done professionally, but it was kind of a learning curve. When did you find your sense of self-worth? Because it sounds like you didn't have much of it. I thought I did. And I thought I did. I thought I was being successful and whatever. I had the beautiful girlfriend and this and that. So it was like, what? Well, whatever. I was feeling relatively happy, to be quite honest, every day. It wasn't like I was miserable by any stretch. I had worked in, moved into a really awesome job. I lived in a great place and I was almost too happy. That's the problem is that it w- I was never miserable. That's, that was the issue for my whole life. I've always rode pretty positive uh, in the SEAL teams. The problem was when I got too happy, I tore it all down. I would party too. Because I was in too good of a mood. And then when I moved into this next stuff, I was in a great funding mood. I wasn't really trying to numb anything. Hey, some people try to run for I wasn't trying to I was trying to enhance it. That was a little bit like a different angle. I wasn't hiding running hiding or numbing anything. I was feeling great. So I wanted to feel even better. But not the right way. Right? Because it's it's false. So you're and you're gonna crash and burn at some point, which is what happened to me and it wasn't well I didn't find myself worth the way later in the Legion because I was fine and then I moved into a venture capitalist job and then started stacking on a fentanyl habit that I started because of just emotional hurt I had gotten broken up at the time and I kind of started this and I just kind of kept the habit going I found out I liked it at night and I felt good and I kept working so it was like of my my work output I never like partied it wasn't focused. I wasn't out in clubs and hanging out. I was not lying to fentanyl and doing emails till three in the morning. Dead serious. I was raising millions of dollars of capital with for a year work because I was working like 19, 20, 21 hours a day. And I would wake up, take out all continue on. And so like my bosses were like, wow, this guy's output is crazy. So I got promoted over the months to CEO of the, of the company, one of them, and was raising millions for multiple other companies, pitching techs meet with congressmen, doing all these things. So I had all this social proof, man, I'm crushing. Who can tell me shit? But I was getting speed off. I was missing meetings. I was, things started slipping through the cracks. People started whispering on my back, right? There was like all these things, which I wasn't noticing at all because I was too in it. And then I just came crashing and burning. And that's when everything fell apart. It was like two years to the day. Almost, it was Five years to the day today, really. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so it was five years to the day today. It all came crashing down. So it was it was a, a moment where I just realized that it was all going away. And I still had some, that delusional confidence, like it might come back. So that was like kind of keeping me in the game. But then I realized kind of moving into the future is when I was homeless in my truck and why suicidal with no money and nothing. I, that's when I realized that delusional confidence was gone. Right. There was at some point, even my confidence can get crushed. And that was the moment for me when I went, damn, like I got no hope in any direction. And that's really hard for me. That's a really hard place for me to get to because I do have that really rooted, deep confidence, but I couldn't even grasp it. Let's go there. You're in your truck, you, um, at the lowest point, you're contemplating suicide. Um, you have your shotgun right there. Right. And, um, what questions did you ask yourself or did you state to pull yourself out of it and just 
go to France. Well, it was a while, but I was just like, man, I'm tired. That was really the bottom thing. I was just so tired of trying. And I didn't see the point anymore. That was a lot of my dialogue. But then I realized I was being pretty selfish. And most of the stuff I was thinking about was me, not anybody else. So that's what I decided. If I'm going to die, I might as well do it cool. So I was like, maybe they'll send me to deployment or something. That's really why I thought. I was like, well, if I'm going to die, I might as well do it with my boots on. So that's what, or write a cool story while doing it. So that's when I was deciding to do it for me. 